if you're going to indict Trump on non-crimes, then let's think about indicting Obama, Hillary, Schiff, Bill, Biden, Pelosi, you name it, on the real crimes. First up, of course, is the outrageous attack on a Republican form of government by Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, who, uh, for the first time in American history, uh, indicted a former president of the United States, obviously President Trump. And uh, it's an unprecedented act. It was an abusive act. It was a malicious act. It was a political act. It was election interfering act. And it was a wild act of abuse of power, a sensitive power that all prosecutors have uh, when it comes to deciding whether to prosecute someone. And uh, the president was a political prisoner. He was taken into custody uh, based on bad faith charges that had no basis in law, uh, no basis in fact. So it's not a question of his doing something wrong and he shouldn't be prosecuted. No, he did nothing wrong. He settled a case, he settled a dispute. Arguably, he was the target of an extortion operation by Stormy Daniels, and they're trying to cram all that in to felony charges. Now, you know, many others have spoken about the uh, lack of specificity in the charges, uh, just how weak the case is, uh, the case is uh, which further highlights the political nature of it. If you can't explain something legally as being justified, then what's the explanation? Well, when something stupid or wrong usually happens, in cases like this, it's not because the law is bad or the facts are bad or you know, the, the sort of legal analysis you would bring to bear. It's because politics are guiding the decision making by Alvin Bragg. And of course, he's a Soros-backed prosecutor. Uh, I know that uh, line has been bandied a around a bit, uh, but I want to explain it further. Soros was a key supporter of his campaign through this other group, uh, a substantial portion of the monies he spent on his campaign or had spent on his behalf was as a result of Soros's intervention. And you know, Soros is an extremist and he supports, generally speaking, extremist candidates. And in the case of district attorneys like Bragg, these extremist candidates uh, see their role as not enforcing the rule of law, prosecuting criminals, but using the tools of the prosecutor, prosecutor's office for political purposes, and whether it be letting criminals out, or in the case of Trump, targeting people based on politics and turning them into, as I said, uh, political prisoners. And, and yes, I mean, I mean it when I say political prisoner. I had, um, or Judicial Watch had, uh, PolitiFact, which is one of these left-wing, uh, dishonest fact-checking organizations that harass groups like Judicial Watch and conservatives in order to get them censored. Uh, suggests that when I said that he was a political prisoner, I should have to back it up and that's not factually accurate. And I, you know, we sent back, you know, your, your question's absurd. Of course he's a political prisoner. And the idea you're gonna fact check an opinion like that is, is just beyond belief. Uh, but that shows you where the left is at. I mean, you call them out on the truth and they quote, wanna fact check you? Does anyone seriously, seriously dispute that President Trump is being prosecuted because of his politics versus anything he did wrong? And of course, you know, just to bring you back to the underlying indictment, uh, another indication of the abuse is he's charged with 34 felonies, right? And by now you've probably heard it explained multiple times that uh, the alleged issue of falsifying business records, which are um, typically misdemeanors have been kind of uh, uh, turned into felonies under his theory or um, Bragg's theory of the case because they were in an effort to commit another crime, namely campaign finance crimes of some type. But in the indictment, he doesn't list what those other crimes are about. So they've arrested the former president of the United States current leading candidate for president of the United States, or at least tied with Biden in the polls, more or less. And they're not telling him what the crime is. 
And Bragg's excuse afterwards is, well, we're not required to put that into the pleadings and we'll bring out all the evidence during trial. That's your Stalinist approach to prosecuting Trump. You're going to get arrested. We're not going to tell you what the crimes are and we're going to tell you what the evidence is during trial. I tell you, if justice is being served, Mr. Bragg will be removed as a district attorney for abuse of office and disbarred. But we know how justice is going to go. It's New York City. It's a left-leaning jurisdiction. The whole political class in there is anti-Trump. Uh, the judge himself, uh, he made modest contributions. I think the reports are $35. But it was $35 to Democrats and uh, at least Democrat political organizations, campaigns, candidates, et cetera, and at least one small contribution to Biden. And my understanding of the ethics rules is that judges aren't supposed to be making political contributions of any size to candidates or political organizations. So, you know, we know how it's going to go in New York. Now, we can hope good sense prevails, wisdom and discernment prevail, justice prevails, but we know how it's going to go. And uh, we also, I think, can guess how it's going to go in Fulton County, Georgia, where another left-wing prosecutor is concocting crimes to charge Trump with, or in here in Washington, D.C., where you have uh, the Biden um, uh, Justice Department, uh, who just hired a, a, a special counsel to investigate Trump on January 6th and this document hoax that they're pursuing. So you have three sets of politicized prosecutors in Georgia, D.C., and in New York, all thinking of ways to make Trump a political prisoner. They took an aggressive step forward with the Bragg um, indictment. And now Trump, you know, has this sort of Damocles over his head. It's already election interference because everything he says can and will be used against him in a court of law. The judge has essentially warned him if he says anything too aggressive, uh, you know, he's subject to court sanction or restrictions. So already the campaign has been distorted as a result of Bragg's election interference. And this is what I, this is what I issued. This is the statement I issued on Judicial Watch's behalf in uh, earlier this week when we had that horrible day of uh, Trump being indicted. What a sad day for America. And what a blow to the rule of law and our Republican form of government. Today, President Trump and the American people were abused and victimized by New York Democrat politician Alvin Bragg, who abused his office to try to jail a man he must know to be innocent. This is an indictment about nothing based on non-crimes and politics. It's a rigged prosecution to rig an election. The court must end this malicious prosecution before the nation is irreparably damaged. In the meantime, Congress must immediately investigate Bragg's election interference and his political attack on Trump's civil rights. And Judicial Watch, of course, has already launched a series of Freedom of Information Act requests and open records inquiries into this unprecedented attack on the American way. And I say this, every politician of note should be denouncing this. Every Republican, every conservative, every activist along the right or Republican uh, areas should be concerned about their personal liberty. Every dissident liberal should be concerned about their personal liberty. I mean, this, this is a dangerous escalation in the war on the rule of law and, as I say, our Republican form of government. And by Republican form of government, I mean we've got rules. We have laws in place, right? And are we going to be a nation of laws or a nation of men where politicians target their enemies and abuse the powers of law entrusted to them by the American people and um, entrusted to them under the oath they took to try to jail their political enemies? And, you know, it's all part of a piece because it seems like things are kind of spiraling out of control, doesn't it? I mean, you see in Tennessee where you had these leftists engage in this violent intimidation insurrection against the Tennessee state legislature for whatever reason. I, I think they were using, um, uh, they wanted to eliminate Second and Fourteenth Amendment rights related to gun ownership 
in Tennessee, and the legislature is conservative, and so they thought the way to deal with that was to try to uh, wreck the legislature, including having members of the legislature participate in that wrecking operation. And at least two members, I think, were, were expelled as a result, and then you have the entire left justify that. Shows you that their whole concern about January 6th is largely a lie, doesn't it? The left embraces political violence, intimidation, and insurrection. Now, what next, to get back to the Trump issue, what next for Trump? I don't know. I mean, I think he's going to be indicted by all of these leftists in all these jurisdictions. And uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I, th I say we're an undiscovered country. And I, I made a comment to the Washington Post um, over the last few days, it was uh, over the last weekend, that got picked up in the media, and I said all bets are off. Because you can bet uh, local district attorneys in conservative jurisdictions like Texas and Florida are going to be trying to find a hook, for instance, into the Biden family so they can prosecute them. And unlike Trump, there's plenty of evidence the Biden family has been involved in substantial criminal activity, so the hook may be substantial. So is that where we're going to be? I don't know. And in this case, the pres President Trump submitted himself to the jurisdiction of the court in New York. Well, that isn't always going to be the case. So we could have rule of law crises as a result of these uh, political prosecutions in the future. Some people may object in ways that, you know, create a crisis. So what's the way out? Well, there's got to be consequences for this misconduct, right? And there has to be consequences under law. And all the tools available to anyone of authority in our nation's public life should be used. And the president, if he had any principles, uh, would shut down the Justice Department harassment of his uh, competitor for the presidency. And he'd ask the Justice Department to see what's going on with Bragg. The governor of, of New York, again, should pardon or commute or shut down Bragg's operation. Congress can shut all of this down by defunding New York in a multiple ways. You hear about this debt limit fight and Republicans trying to get certain policies and cuts in, in under this uh, debt limit fight. Well, why wouldn't this be part of it? Similarly, cut off the Justice Department's abuse of citizens who support Trump or are perceived to be on the wrong side of the political aisle. Same goes for Fulton, Fulton County, Georgia. So when, when people say nothing can be done, either they're not being, thinking it through enough or they're just trying to keep you quiet. And I'm telling you something can be done under the law to stop this abuse of Trump and other innocent Americans. And so Judicial Watch is gonna do what it can. We've got the several investigations already underway onto all of these issues I've been talking about. And we've been um, forthright and speaking truth to power about holding Biden accountable, for instance, holding, you know, is Hillary now gonna be subject to prosecution? What about Obama? Why not? New rules, right? New rules. I tell you what, if you're gonna indict Trump on non-crimes, then let's think about indicting Obama, Hillary, Schiff, Bill, Biden, Pelosi, you name it, on the real crimes that they've been credibly accused of. But there's got to be consequences. There's got to be an understanding that you cannot cross this line without a reaction from those who want to protect and promote the rule of law, our Constitution, and truth, justice, and the American way. So I'm glad it's been a few days since the indictment, so I'm not as angry as I otherwise would have been. But I don't, I, I would, anger wasn't the right word. It's, you know, because, you know, it's outrageous, obviously. It's sadness. Because think about President Trump personally. He didn't do anything wrong. 
and he's being dragged through the mud and having his liberty put at risk simply because of his politics. He's been terribly abused, his civil rights have been abused, and I said it once and I'll say it again because it's the ultimate truth here. President Trump is a crime victim. And now Alvin Bragg is one of the perps abusing him. So uh, obviously we'll be on top of this and you know, come back here often to see uh, what we have to say on the current events and obviously we'll be uh, advising you of our investigations as they proceed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.